Generally speaking, the most acclaimed and beloved movie performances have all benefited from ample presence throughout the film, giving the actor involved time to win the audience over before the end credits roll. And yet, every so often, an actor will make such meteoric impact in just a single scene that there's really nothing else they need to say. The movie's theirs. Everyone, go home. Nothing is going to get better than that. And that's certainly the case with these 10 actors, who in one delineated sequence didn't just impress us all, they stole the whole damn movie from everyone around them. I'm Ewan, this is War Culture, and here are 10 actors who stole movies in a single scene. Number 10. Philip Seymour Hoffman, Hard Eight. In the case of Philip Seymour Hoffman in Hard Eight, he stole the movie so damn hard and effectively changed the entire trajectory of his tragically short career. The crime film was Paul Thomas Anderson's directorial debut and saw Hoffman make a brief cameo appearance as an obnoxious craps player who taunts protagonist Sidney played by Philip Baker Hall, from across the table. He goads Sidney into placing a high bet alongside him, and when they both lose, the man desperately attempts to mask his crushing disappointment at losing his money. In a span of just three minutes, Hoffman does a mesmerizing job depicting a gambling addict's rollercoaster of emotions, lurching from overconfident exhilaration to scarcely suppressed heartbreak. Hard Aid's a terrific movie, no matter which way you slice it, but Hoffman's performance feels more rich richly lived in than any other in the film. Number 9. Margaret Bowman, Hell or High Water Hell or High Water is a western crime thriller jam-packed with stellar turns in the likes of Jeff Bridges, Ben Foster, and Chris Pine, but the movie's most talked about performance was from a near 90-year-old actress you've almost certainly never heard of. Midway through the movie, Texas Rangers Marcus and Alberto visit a diner to eat, where their waitress is a surly elderly woman credited only as T-Bone Waitress, and played by Margaret Bowman. She immediately asks the pair, what don't you want? Much to their confusion, before launching into a hilariously cranky monologue about the diner's unique menu system, which I won't dare repeat here because I'm never gonna match what Bowman brings to the table. Bowman's delivery is note perfect, which combined with Marcus and Alberto's dumbfounded reactions to her combative waitressing methods makes the scene the best in the film absolutely crammed with banger sequences. Bowman sadly passed away in 2018, yet in just two minutes cemented her legacy as stealing a whole ass movie away from a truly outstanding cast. Number 8. Viola Davis, Doubt John Patrick Shanley's 2008 drama Doubt boasts firecracking performances from Meryl Streep, Amy Adams, Philip Seymour Hoffman, and arguably best of all, Viola Davis. Davis, who was somehow scarcely known to moviegoers at this point in time, appears at the end of the film's second act for a mere 10 minute sequence as Mrs. Miller, the mother of a boy who may or may not have been abused by the parish school's priest. When Sister Aloysius informs Mrs. Miller of her fears, Miller reacts in an unexpectedly passive, seemingly unconcerned manner downplaying the sister's claims. In a shattering monologue, she then reveals that her son is gay, and if any molestation were brought to light, it would likely result in her homophobic husband killing their child. As such, Mrs. Miller would prefer that whatever is happening between her son and the priest, if anything, continue for a few months until he can move on to high school. Davis is phenomenal throughout the scene, Shanley smartly treading the camera close and tight on her face at almost all times, even enough to make you forget she's acting opposite one of the greatest actresses of all time. Number 7. Bruce Campbell, Escape from LA Escape from New York, it may not be, but John Carpenter's riotous 90s follow-up Escape from LA is a lot better than its reputation would lead you to believe. The director's scathing instincts are as in tune as ever, swapping New York's critique on the hysteria of law and order politics for a Golden State-based takedown of Hollywood vanity and the rise of evangelicalism. Also, it has Bruce Campbell, and he kind of basically ends up running away with a whole movie, despite literally only being in it for two minutes. Campbell has just the one scene in LA, but it leaves you wishing he was the main threat in the movie rather than Marxist revolutionary Cuervo Jones. The Evil Dead actor plays the Surgeon General of Beverly Hills, a body augmentation doctor to the stars who preserves the beauty of his clientele by harvesting organs and body parts from the average Joes stuck inside the post-apocalyptic City of Angels one of whom, of course, ends up being Kurt Russell's Snake Plissken. Boasting a hilariously Botoxed face and bloodied medical fatigues, Campbell walks in and 
immediately starts admonishing his underlings for bringing in subpar specimens, until he finally lands on Snake and his companion, Taslima Valeria Gelino, and starts groping them for parts to steal. He's quickly dispatched by Pliskin, sadly, and never to be seen again. Escape from LA is a genuinely strong sequel with a great cast, but you'll spend the rest of the runtime wishing Campbell would come back. Number 6. Dave Batista, Blade Runner 2049. Blade Runner 2049 is filmed to the rafters with great moments and performances, but is it controversial to say that the first five minutes is the highest point Denis Villeneuve's sequel reaches? The opening to the belated Blade Runner sequel is filled with suspense, introducing us to Ryan Gosling's K as he tracks down a rogue replicant by the name of Sapper Morton, played by Dave Batista. Villeneuve and cinematographer Roger Deakins frame the sequence expertly, mirroring the tension as a stove begins to boil, but it's Batista who is the real star. The former WWE talent was excellent as Drax in Guardians of the Galaxy, but his role in 2049 perhaps better intimated his range as an actor. He conveys so much with so little here as a replicant preparing to fight for his life, first with the dawning resignation of having finally been caught, and then with a defiant resolve as he readies himself to take on K. It's a beautiful, tragic exchange that echoes the remainder of the film. Number 5. JT Walsh Outbreak If you watch any thriller movie from the 1990s, there's a solid chance that JT Walsh will show up and add rings around the main cast with a memorable supporting performance. The late character actor is surely best remembered for his brief but unforgettable turn in Wolfgang Peterson's 1995 disaster film Outbreak. Walsh appears halfway through the film as the White House Chief of Staff, who briefs the assembled military and political personnel on the dilemma over whether or not to firebomb the town of Cedar Creek in order to contain the deadly Mataba virus. In a blistering, soul-stirring two-minute monologue, the chief of staff urges the officials to only approve the bombing if they truly believe it to be a necessary, last-ditch act to save humanity as a whole without any dissenters in the room. It's a fiery, passionate speech, which succinctly surmises the major ethical dilemma of the bombing scenario and sees Walsh deliver the most persuasive piece of acting in the entire movie. Number 4. Anna de Armas, No Time to Die. Much as Bond girls so often end up feeling like tacked on afterthoughts without much agency of their own, Anna de Armas' performance as CIA agent Paloma was pure laser focused dynamite. De Armas only appears in the film for around 10 minutes, meeting up with Bond in Cuba to help track down a scientist captured by Spectre. From the moment we meet Paloma, it's clear that she's not one of 007's typical female sidekicks. She's nervous, genuinely hilarious, and doesn't have any interest in the romance with Bond. Oh, and she kicks a shed load of ass in the ensuing action sequence, while rocking a plunging cocktail dress and heels no less, before congratulating Bond on a job well done and going on her merry way. Number 3. Donald Sutherland, JFK Oliver Stone's JFK is a frenzied three-hour conspiracy drama that, at times, can feel like we're directly peering into the wildness of the director's brain. In other words, it's stupidly compelling, and while it may repeat the Camelot myth of JFK's presidency, there's some truly great stuff here about the actual alleged conspiracy and how the events in Dallas shattered a generation's hopes and dreams. Kevin Costner gives arguably his best performance as real-life district attorney Jim Garrison, and he's flanked by other great actors like Tommy Lee Jones, Joe Pesci, Gary Oldman, and Kevin Bacon. I could list the rest of the cast, but for those who know, we'd be here all day. But despite just how great that ensemble is, there is one actor who walks in for one scene in the middle of the film and ends up walking out with the entire movie. Donald Sutherland, who plays Mr. X, a member of military intelligence who, over the course of 16 maddeningly good minutes, lays out the entire conspiracy and cover-up to kill the president. It's probably the greatest exposition dump in movie history. Sutherland are ferry boatmen into a conspiracy hole that's too irresistible Irresistible not to get swept up in. Number 2. Alec Baldwin, Glen Gary, Glen Ross. The prospect of stealing away a movie crammed with heavyweight performances from the likes of Al Pacino, Jack Lemon, Ed Harris, Alan Arkin, and Kevin Spacey seems absolutely ridiculous on paper, until you see the damn acting clinic that Alec Baldwin puts on in 
Glengarry Glen Ross. Early in the acid tongue drama, Baldwin enters the flailing real estate office occupied by the central characters, playing Blake, a top-ranking salesman sent to motivate the team of sad sacks. In a mesmerizing eight-minute scene, Baldwin delivers a deliciously scathing monologue which at once both eviscerates the assembled salesmen for their poor results and attempts to motivate them to succeed by threatening their jobs if they don't. Baldwin oozes confidence and machismo in a way that makes Blake easy to loathe, even though his immaculate delivery and brutal put-downs of the other salesmen are undeniably darkly hilarious. To make it even better, Blake didn't appear in David Mamey's original play, but was added into the movie's screenplay in order to clarify the story's narrative thrust. And in turn, the writer came up with perhaps the single finest monologue of his career, with Baldwin giving a short but sweet performance that should have scored him a Best Supporting Actor Oscar nomination. This doesn't take away from Lemon or Pacino, the former of whom gives one of the most heartbreaking performances I've ever seen, but there's a reason why when you think of Glengarry Glen Ross, you think of Baldwin. And number one, Estelle Reiner, When Harry Met Sally. Even folks who've never seen the classic rom-com When Harry Met Sally are well aware of the movie's most iconic scene, where Sally, Meg Ryan, fakes an orgasm in a crowded restaurant in front of Harry, played by Billy Crystal, in order to prove that men can't tell when a woman is faking it. After Sally finishes her display and returns to her meal, director Rob Reiner cuts to an elderly woman in the restaurant who pointedly tells her waiter, I'll have what she's having. It's by far the funniest and most memorable line in the entire movie, and was performed by none other than Reiner's own mother, Estelle Reiner, to make it even better. No matter how terrific Ryan and Crystal's chemistry is throughout the movie, with a single line of dialogue and mere seconds on screen, the director's own mom came in and took the whole damn thing for herself. And those were 10 actors who stole movies in a single scene. Have any other one scene performance faves? Shout them out down in the comments below. And once you've done that, it would be great if you could drop the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you fancy more. Either way, thank you all so much for watching. I've been Ewan, this has been What Culture, and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye!